<laughs> why, why, why is he trying to set me up? But I welcome it because, um, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't make mistakes. Um, there's a reason why he said, you know, speak to Ike. Maybe he has something uh, to share that the people um, need to hear. Not want to hear, but need to hear. So by the grace of God, um, I'll just be, you know, like you said, sharing some meditations that I have. And I'll start with a, a testimony um, because you, <laughs> you know, when he gave the time for testimony, nobody uh, said one. Uh, before I proceed, can everybody hear me okay? Just want to make sure I'm coming through uh, loud and clear. Uh, an amen from somebody to make sure that I'm, you're hearing me. Amen. Clear. Okay, praise the Lord. So the testimony is this. I had a, like, like I said, I mean, we work in financial services and one of the banks that we, you know, we work uh, with, you know, you meet with the bank guys there and you form some sort of relationship. So this guy um, happens to be a Christian, a brother, so, you know, I interacted with him and he was telling me that he wanted to, you know, he, he's a, like an assistant pastor and he's really going into that, that line. And then one day he said, you know, he's resigning. He's going on missions. Um, I said, Omo, <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? He said, yeah, he's prayed about it. His wife has prayed about it. And this is in Ghana and he was going on missions outside of Ghana. You know, I think they were going to Cote d'Ivoire. Um, and he doesn't speak French. You know, so I said, ah, my guy, I think well, you know, pastors, they don't earn anything. You know? <laughs> yeah, I've been a banker for several years. You understand? He said, no, he's, he's, you know, he's convinced that, you know, this is a line God wants, you know, him to do in terms of ministry. So he, um, he left. And, you know, we, from time to time we talk, you know, I think it's been about two years now. So recently, you know, he reached out to me and said that, you know, um, he's looking for work. You know, I, I'd asked him what he was doing now because, you know, he's full time, but I mean, you have time to work as well. You know, they don't pay you that much. So he's, I think he was teaching somewhere, but he said the school was closing down and he's looking for something more permanent, something, you know, that can really take care of his family, you know, that kind of stuff. So I said, okay, let me see what I can do. Uh, send me your CV. Let me send it around to some people. At least I know bankers. I know people in fintech. So I sent it around. I said, let's see what God can do. So one of the banks now called in, one of the big Pan-African banks. Now, you know, I spoke to a lady there. They called me for an interview. At each stage, you'd call me and say, oh, it's going well. I went for the interview. Ah, they said I should come and see the MD. I said, ah, praise the Lord. So after seeing the MD, then silence. <laughs> he called me and said, ah, Bright, Alpha, I have not heard from them. I said, it is well. I said, it is well. He said, okay, well, no problem. So I think about a week ago, you know, we spoke again. He said, you know, he'd gotten some other offers from some fintechs, but, you know, they didn't really like the offer, you know, that kind of stuff. I said, well, you know, my own belief is a bed in hand is better than 25 in the bush. Um, if the bank one that you're believing God for hasn't come, if this one has come, well, hold on to it. And, you know, if the bank one does come, at least you can always move on, you know. So he said, okay, he'll think about it. Just before I logged in, he called me. <laughs> he called me and said, ah, bro, I, they, the bank just called me. They said I should come so that we can talk about salary. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. He said, ah, thank you. So, I mean, the reason why I give that testimony is that, you know, if you are convinced that it is God who is leading you to do that job, to do that business, to embark upon that adventure, even if your spouse may be like, what is this man saying? What is this woman saying? Even if your parents may be selling you, have you, are you sure? You know, once you have that conviction in your spirit that it is God, he will show himself strong on your behalf. 
you know so when he just told me i was just so encouraged i said ah thank you father because you know he will not put his own to shame amen praise the lord so i just wanted to give that testimony i hope it encourages somebody who may be at the point in their life where they want to make a decision and they're you know contemplating yes no maybe but the main thing um i want to talk about tonight is about the image the image of christ he said um in second corinthians 3 18 he says but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the image, the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. Romans 12, 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, the transformation did not say it is restricted to the place of worship, the fellowship, the church. It says we are to be transformed into the self, the same image of Christ. That means in my home, I should be a reflection of Christ. That means in my business, my career, my place of work, in the marketplace, I should be a reflection of Christ. Now, some of us are perfect at reflecting Christ in church and in gatherings like this. We all know how to speak Christianese. We all know how to go through the motions. But as we step outside into the marketplace, do we really reflect Christ? Now, there's something that the apostles, sorry, that the scribes talked about the followers of Jesus in Acts 4, 13 to 14. He says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing about it they realized that they had been with Jesus. So there was an, a proof, an evidence that these men were not just normal men. They had been with the Messiah because they had a, 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 a fragrance. They had characteristics of the Messiah. So we ask ourselves, I ask myself, when I walk, when I talk, in my place of assignment, in my work, in my family? Can people say that about me? Can they say that I have been with Jesus? That I am, remember we are ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador represents his home country. You are supposed to reflect your home country. You're supposed to reflect the president that sent you on that assignment. So I'll give you a little bit of uh, a small exercise to do. So if you look at the screen um, that you can see in my face is there, don't mind the look. If you turn it round the, so it's horizontal, there's a straight line, okay? Uh-huh, okay, great. So now you can see that the line is straight, okay? From the beginning, I'm sure if you're looking at your screen, if it's a phone, you see the record, that record live is there. That's the beginning line and the end line is on the other side. Now, the beginning is the beginning of our walk with Christ. The end 
is the image of Christ that we're supposed to represent. Now, this is not about a vocation. Some are lawyers, doctors, artists. It doesn't matter, business people, you know. It, the vocation really is not what we're talking about. It is the image of Christ because in whatever vocation we find ourselves, we are still supposed to reflect that image. So our journey is from A to Z to that image of Christ. Now, it is a straight line. Now, I want us to do something. From the record, let us just start and move a little bit by three degrees. Three degrees and draw another straight line. Now, I'm telling you that when you draw that straight line from the beginning of record at a three degree tangent all the way to the end, the two points will be different. The three degree one will be somewhere in the middle of the Burnley heading. Am I right? Please, if I'm, if I'm wrong, just tell me, you know, sometimes people just talk their own, but it, it, am I right? Uh, let, let, me, let me hear some feedback. I wanna make sure you're getting the illustration. But are you are you with me? Uh, can we are we are we understanding the illustration I'm I'm giving? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, can, okay, good. I can understand. So, I can understand. Yes. So you can see that the end one was a straight line. They're both straight lines. Remember, but the image is now been diverted. It has been diluted. It is no longer the original image. Now imagine as we are walking, it's a walk that we're walking and you've gone slightly three degrees to the right. By the time you walk 10 paces, you can see the difference. By the time you walk a mile, you can see the difference. By the time you walk a year, you can see how far we have gone from the image of Christ that we're supposed to represent. And the truth is, that is the reality of a lot of our lives. We are followers of Christ, but we are not reflecting the actual image of Christ because we have deviated from the path. We have deviated from the fundamentals of Christianity. About 10 years ago, 10, yeah, 11 years ago, I was in serious debt. I think it was over about 30 million naira or, or more. And uh, all of us, I'm sure, we were around 30, 10 years ago. So you can imagine what 30 million naira was then compared to now. So it wasn't small beans. Now, when the whole thing came crashing down, I was... Hey, I was a mess. To top it all off, it was the time that I lost my job as well. <laughs> I said, now, wow, father, hey. But I mean, when I sobered down, we went to the church and, you know, they, one of the, they handed us over to a pastor and the guy said, you know, pastors see a lot. Sometimes they don't see everything they see. The guy said, the hedge is broken. He says, you, you need to repair the hedge. Basically saying that you guys are not living right. If you're not living right, these are the kind of things that happen. Now, a lot of us in life, I was Christians, so we're not saying, I mean, I've been a Christian for many, many years. But have I actually represented Christ? in my actions, in my words, in my deeds. The other day I was in church and the pastor that came, he said, one of the biggest scriptures that revolutionized his life was, you know, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Now, after the 
the death thing, when I looked back and I said, ah, ah, he's not, he's, this one is not the devil chasing you. This one is not the village people. There's some seeds you sowed in your past and they have now grown. You sow one corn, you reap many, many corns, Abby. I began to remember, oh, there were some loans I took. I ran away. I didn't pay back. You know, there's some, you know, things that a Christian should not be seen doing. Now, the harvest had come. And I had to pay. But God is merciful. Sometimes he lets those things happen to bring you back home. Now, the reason why I'm talking like this, because I just believe maybe God is talking to somebody, that it is time to retrace your steps. Because what happens is if we don't retrace our steps, we will be exposed openly. And this thing happened, fortunately for me, <laughs> it was before the time of this real Twitter, 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 you know, everybody just tweeting, 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 putting picture of this is the person that, you understand? If it had happened in this day and age, uh, it, you are putting my picture here and coming to talk. Ratonia will not even be calling people like this. Ah, is it not that guy? Ah, this, ah, this guy, you understand? But God is not a man that he should lie. I gave that testimony about that brother. He went to do the work of the Lord and God started to reward him. God is lifting him up. There are a lot of things that are wrong in our lives today, wherever we may be. The image of Christ is not what we are reflecting. Some of us gained promotions in our places of work by pulling down others, by telling lies against others. You know, a Christian should be someone that people can tell the kind of character he has. When you do business with a Christian, you can go to sleep and know that this is what he will do. This is what he will not do. Unfortunately, today, we are giving Christ a bad name. So I went through what I went through. It took years. But the first thing was to, you know, rebuild your altar. Rebuild a prayer altar. Tithe, I wasn't even paying tithe. You know, you do it like this, like this. Okay, let me pay. What I'll pay to, I'll not pay. I'll do. You know, when you're down, when there's nowhere else to go, <laughs> you better <laughs> go back to the Father. So you had to get the fundamentals right. You had to start living according to what? The Word of God. If we go to um, Psalm 1, he says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Everything we're looking for is in the word of God. John one says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. If we want to be transformed into the image of Christ, it is in his word. It is in the daily study of the word. It is in the daily application of what he has told us. The other day, somebody called me. I shouldn't have picked the call. When I picked it, I ended up telling a lie. And my conscience just pricked me. Said, oh, I, I, uh. but I should not have picked that call. Why did I pick it? If I knew that it would, I would need to tell a lie that I should not be telling as a child of God. You know, God is, he cares about the little things as much as the big things. He wants our entire life to reflect him. We will not have to worry so much about money, about this, about that, if we can just 
live a life that actually reflects the Christ that we claim to follow. So it is for each of us to look at our lives. You know, the image that Christ has for us, are we actually reflecting it? If we are not, where can we make amends? How can we retrace our steps back to the original image of Christ? And it is in the word that we'll find it. That shall not kill, that shall not steal, that shall not bear false witness. All these things, you know, in the little time I've spent on this planet, I realized that everything Christ says regarding his commandments are actually for our benefit. They're not for his benefit. They're for our own benefit. Whatever, I'm sure some of us may be married. If you look at the kind of issues you're having with your spouse, if you look at what Christ says we should do concerning the relationship, if we obey, we'll find that there will be peace. He says that the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, hmm? but it is in what? Hmm. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We all know what righteousness is. It's living right, not by our own way, but according to the ability that God gives us through Christ and the Holy Spirit. Peace. There was a time that <laughs> even picking up my phone, I was afraid. There was a time that I actually left our house, just, just left where we're living, went to go and just stay somewhere, just to, you know, the pressure was too much. What kind of a life is that when, you know, you've done something, you've twisted some numbers and you're just praying, ah, Father, let them not, let them not. You know, the invoice, you, 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 you maneuvered it somehow. You know in your heart there's no peace. and joy in the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is not a gate man. He's, he doesn't, I mean, he's not a gate crasher. He will prompt you. There's none of us who is honest, who will say the, the wrong things we've done, we didn't get a prompting. He will prompt and say, ah, my brother, eh, no, my sister, no, come on, come on, you're better than that. But we shoot that voice away. So tonight, I believe God is telling one or two of us that we need to rededicate our, 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 our journey to him, our lives to him, our ways to him. So if a man's ways please the Lord, he causes even his enemies to be at peace with him. His ways cannot, our ways cannot please him if our hands are dirty, if our minds are dirty. Amen. So I just want to leave us, you know, um, with that. It is about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. There is no one that God cannot redeem. There's no how far we have gone. And let me tell you something. The, the further you go, the higher you go, the higher the fall. The higher the fall. So if you are building on lies, on deceit, some companies have been built like that. You know, but God is so, he's long suffering. It may be decades later before the whole thing comes crashing down. Because God is like, no, they can, you know, they will repent, they will retrace their steps. So we need to go back to the basics, back to the Bible. Do not touch this. Do not do this. Not legalistically, but with the help of the Holy Spirit. He sees our desire that I want to please him. I want a life that pleases my master. You see, our job, whatever business we're in, whatever line of work, we'll just see a transformation there. We'll see doors opening up. We'll see people See this, he called me and said, oh, I'm looking for a job. And I, I'm not the one that gave him the job. I just sent the CV to one or two places. 
and a door opened. That is how the realm of the spirit works. When the children of God are walking in line with the commandments, he makes ways where there seems to be no way. Amen. So my exhortation to us this night is if the image you are looking at in the mirror does not look like the image of Christ, then we need to change. We need to make amends. We need to look at those areas that we need to, you know, transform. We need to lay aside those weights and those sins that so easily beset us and run with endurance the race that is set before us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Tony. Uh, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, these, these are not the... It's... Uh, it's a punching message. But um, it, it really aligns with... Um, it's scriptural and it really aligns you know as he was talking uh, sorry before you you know uh, Ike is a quite busy person and I know he has said so many things all together and it's not the kind of typical message we hear in today's parlance you know but what he there's a scripture he can saying if a man's ways pleases the lord he makes his enemies to be at peace with him basically you stop hustling you stop hustling and lots of christians are hustling today you know when god is ready to give them things you know but there was a scripture as he was sharing that kept coming to me he says i think in isaiah also he says my hands are not short but your iniquities, I don't know, but I think it's that there's a scripture. You know, so um, two things, then I can just pray for us, uh, then we'll pray. I just feel that at this point in time, this message is timely. It might be speaking directly to someone, but also I also could see certain things. I just want us to just ask God for mercy. I want us to just ask God to cleanse us, to forgive us in any way, area, could be in our thoughts. Some people feel comfortable watching some videos. The videos, they are skit, but they are pornographic in nature, and people feel comfortable watching it. But you know, I said something with the Holy Spirit be, be sitting with you, want to watch that. You know, so I want us to pray that God. Let's ask God for mercy. Maybe there's certain things he said that's resonated and you need to repent. Ask God to help you, to forgive you, to cleanse you. You know, are we reflecting the image of Christ? We are supposed to reflect the image. He talked about relationships. If you do what the Bible says, those conflicts will be subdued. So let's just ask God for mercy. Let's clean, let's ask God to forgive us in any area, in any area. Father, we just ask for your mercy, Lord. Even as a fellowship, even as a fellowship, even as a chapter, how have we been doing his work with levity? How have we represented him? You know, that's, those are some of the things I'm getting from this message. Even that which he said, he shared, he started off with a testimony. And the question is, are we walking in the path he has called us to walk? Mm -hmm. Father, have mercy. Mm -hmm. In any way we've offended, we've walked in error, we ask for cleansing. Mm -hmm. Lord, we, 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 we ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. For every member of this chapter, we ask for mercy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. We plead the blood of Jesus. Thank you. Uh, bro, Brother Ike. 
Can you please pray for us as a church of faith? Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Father and our God, we just want to thank you, O oh Lord. We want to thank you because your word says, where two or more are gathered together in my name, there you are in the midst of them. Father, this gathering is not for merriment. This gathering is not for anything other than to lift the name of Jesus up. This gathering is to build men and women up in the faith, O oh Lord. So that is a gathering that you are behind, O oh Lord. It is a gathering that delights your heart, O oh Lord. Father, I'm praying for every member of this chapter, O oh Lord. I'm praying that, Father, you will visit them, O oh Lord. That, Father, those who have been laboring, those who have been supporting, those who have been sponsoring, those who have been attending, Father, you will meet them at the point of their need, O oh Lord. The Father, they will trace their attention attendance and, and and membership of this 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 meeting this chapter oh lord to the transformation in their lives oh lord and the father you will lift them above their own expectations oh lord no one serves you in vain oh lord father you will reward them oh lord you will reward them privately but you will also reward them openly in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we know the devil is not happy, O oh Lord. So we surround every member with the blood of Jesus, O oh Lord. We say the weapons, O oh Lord, that the enemy is using, they will be of none effect upon their lives in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Rather, everything will increase. There will be more in 